Well, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be with everyone, feeling better. Uh, in about 10 more days, I'm going to be feeling great. Uh, all my fellow teachers said amen. Uh, it's good time, good time. Uh, I told somebody the other day that on May the 19th, 90% of the problems I deal with on a daily basis goes away for two months. Uh, so that makes things exciting. Kentucky Derby yesterday, uh, I was really excited about Thunder Snow. And uh, I think, Don, I saw this morning where they renamed him 33 and Rain. Uh, you teachers will understand a little disappointment there. So uh, anyway, uh, so he didn't, didn't do what we wanted. But a uh, beautiful day today. We're very blessed. Last week, uh, we kind of kicked off a two-week uh, series of focusing on missions. Uh, we had a great time last week uh, looking at uh, some opportunities that we have before us and, and celebrating our uh, Women's Missionary Union uh, Sunday. And uh, Brother Harold brought us a great word last week. And this week, we are blessed to have Brother Jerry Tooley with us uh, from our Davis McLean Association. He is our Director of Missions. And some of you, this may be your first opportunity to meet him. Some of you guys have known him much more uh, longer than I have. Uh, so, because he's been a very in integral part of Living Faith, Living Faith Foundations and, and helping this church uh, through the years. So we're glad to have him here this morning. He's going to be sharing with you guys about what we do in partnering with the davis McLean Association. It is a part uh, of what we do here. Uh, we give a percentage of uh, every uh, offering that we take at Living Faith goes to uh, the davis McLean Association to support the ministries that he's going to be sharing with you. And May is Associational uh, Emphasis Month. And so they do have a special offering uh, that we take in uh, the month of May. And we are at the conclusion of our service today. There will be two uh, folks that will be standing at our doors uh, with offering plates. And if you would like to contribute uh, specifically to that special offering, you'll have the opportunity uh, to do that then. Uh, with that being said, Brother Jerry, I'm going to ask you to come on. And uh, we're going to pray over him this morning and invite him to share what the Lord has laid on his heart and about the work of the Davis McLean Association. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, Brother Tooley. We thank you uh, for him. And Father, we know that he has battled some uh, health issues. And, and so, Father, we pray uh, for a complete healing for his body. Father, we thank you that you've delivered him through uh, these past few weeks. And it's been tough. And, but, Father, he's able to stand before us this morning. And, Father, and proclaim the truth of the gospel, and the love that you have for your children. Father, we're so thankful for what he does and what you're doing through him and our davis McLean Association and, Father, through their ministries. And, Father, we're thankful that he's here today. And we pray, Lord, that you would just bless this time that we have with him and bless him, Father, and his family. We pray this now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good to see you. How many of you know me? How many of you wish you didn't know me? Can I pray one of them psalm prayers and say, <laughs> say take them knuckleheads out? Uh, it's good to be with you, man. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be just about anywhere. Uh, no, I take that back. There's some places I wouldn't want to be. Uh, back uh, right before Christmas, I found out that uh, I needed to have a biopsy done. That was done on January the 6th. A few days later, the doctor called me and told me that I had uh, prostate cancer and couldn't. Then I can't see him for like three weeks. That's cruel and unusual punishment, in my opinion. And then uh, I had to make the doctor didn't help me. He just said, These are your options, pick one. That's really encouraging. You know, and so uh, I talked with some folks and I made the decision that I would go uh, to Vanderbilt uh, to a surgeon there. And I was operated on April the 6th. I'm about four weeks out. And so I'm doing remarkably well. And I would tell you the reason for that is there's been a whole lot of good folk that have prayed for me and lifted me up and taken me to the throne of grace and while the doctor did the surgery, God is the one who heals. And I have every reason to believe that God uh, has uh, used Dr. Smith to get all the cancer. And I'm very thankful for that. I've still got a long way to go. We covet your prayers. But this, uh, let me say something. 
I may have cancer, but cancer don't have me. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, cancer don't have me. And they, uh, I have every reason to believe that the good Lord has still got me here, and there's a reason for me being here. And I'm going to keep on doing uh, the very last thing that he told me to do. And that's to lift up and magnify the Lord Jesus. It's good to be with you. I have known this church for longer than some of you have known this church. Uh, shortly after I became the director of missions, uh, the, current, the pastor that was here at that particular time, and George Chen, uh, came to me and approached me about uh, this church joining the davis McLean Baptist Association. And I got to be there and be a part of that in that process. And
Uh, I've been with you uh, through these years. And one of the great things about being a director of missions and having a long tenure is you've, you learn a lot of folks and you meet, you meet a lot of folks and you're there for them in the good times and the bad times and you're there and, and uh, they learn you. And, and uh, as somebody I said about someone uh, the other day, I, I jokingly made a comment and said, I've grown to love them. And uh, uh, now careful, Terry. And uh, 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 through the years, you learn to, you grow to love people, right? That the, uh, you learn more about them and you see more about them that there is to love and to respect and, and those kinds of things. And when we're faithful together, uh, that's true on, on every side of things. I want to tell you some things about the Davis McLean Baptist Association today, and I'll end up with some scriptures and, and just a little bit of a challenge to you. But the primary part of ministry in any setting is the lives of people that you touch, of the lives that come to know Jesus Christ because of the ministry. Uh, you should have gotten a handout telling about some of the things that we do as an association. Uh, the Baptist Center is down on Lancaster Avenue. It's touched a lot of people. Uh, there's ladies' ministries there. There's a nursing home just across the street. And uh, the Baptist Center ministers there. Uh, those folks, uh, those that are able, oftentimes walk across the street uh, to be met by Miss Sheila. Her name and telephone number is on there, Sheila Cobb. And the ministry that goes on there of uh, uh, tutoring uh, elementary schools, uh, students, uh, other activities. Last year, uh, Gail Bowling uh, put together uh, shoe boxes uh, for uh, uh, people in the nursing homes that do not have regular visitors, does not have family to come, and it was filled with socks and lotion and, and deodorant and all kinds of things like that. And uh, I believe she gave away about 250 of those uh, in nursing homes in this area. I know there was some uh, in, in Owensboro. I think there was some in Ohio County, and I know there was some up in Hancock County, uh, but that she had reached out and ministered to a number of folks through that. People uh, helped give socks and boxes and all those kinds of things to make that happen. Uh, the Baptist Center uh, helps a lot of folks, is ministered to a lot of folks. Uh, they have a quarter store and uh, are always uh, selling items. We have a lot of folks that bring in clothing and things like that. Typically, it's sold for a quarter. That continues and helps with the ministry. But we have found that when rather than giving something to somebody, if they purchase it, they have a little bit different viewpoint about, about that ministry. Also, uh, they have a, a food uh, pantry there and are always needing things to help with the food pantry. Uh, they're always in need of volunteers to sort clothes and things like that. And Miss Sheila's number there, if you'd like to be involved in a, in a ministry like that, that would be a wonderful opportunity for you. Another ministry that we have uh, is located up in Hancock County, is known as Camp Schaefer. Any of you been to Camp Schaefer? Know where Camp Schaefer is? Alrighty, and uh, uh, Camp Schaefer uh, was uh, the initial program of that. Uh, part of the Schaefer family donated uh, the uh, acreage there uh, for the camp, and uh, we have been uh, ministering through the camp for uh, 50 or 60 years now or more, uh, probably more in the 60 or 70 category, actually. And uh, it's a great place in the summertime where uh, boys and girls and teenagers uh, hear about Jesus Christ. And uh, multitudes have been saved at the camp. Uh, and uh, people that have been called to preach at the camp. Uh, two that I will flip up my notch on. A little guy named Adam Coleman. Adam Coleman. Y'all know that guy? I knew you did. See, I can connect with people just like that. I know. Uh, uh, Adam uh, 
felt God calling him to the ministry at Camp Schaefer. There's another knucklehead. I mean another guy uh, named Kenny Rager. Have y'all ever heard of him? Uh, well, it's according, to what, it's according to what I'm going to say, right? Uh, uh, Kenny uh, felt God's call upon his life at Camp Schaefer. And it's interesting, Brother Greg, I have so many people come up to me and say, do y'all still have Camp Schaefer? And I laughingly, I laugh and say, yeah, we sure do. And they say, I met my spouse there. I met my wife there. I met my husband there. And then I look real careful at them and say, are you happy about it? Or are you mad about it? <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really interesting of how many people uh, come up and say, uh, what about the camp? What about uh, what's going on with the camp? And uh, the ministry that we have there. And there's other associations that use our camp. Uh, Blackford Breckenridge uses it. Severns Valley uses it for a children's camp and a youth camp. We have a summer camp. We will have children's camp this summer, youth camp this summer, and uh, they have their own website. I think it's either Camp Schaefer or Schaefer Baptist Camp. I can't ever keep up. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm technically challenged, let me put it like that. And so, uh, uh, but uh, uh, what a ministry and what an opportunity that we have there. Uh, we are thankful to God that Kentucky Changers, Kentucky Adult Changers, uh, was with us last fall. They were with us this spring. They've done a huge amount of work up there for us. If you've not been up to the camp in a while, you might want to go by and just take a look because it's, it is changing and it's looking good. And we're thankful to God for that. And be, because of your gifting and your giving and your sharing with us, we're able uh, to do that uh, and the other things as well. The dental clinic is uh, located next door to the Baptist Center down on Lancaster Avenue. One day, uh, Diane Thacker and I were buying some cabinets uh, for the dental clinic. We were at Lowe's, and we had bought the cabinet, and uh, I had the uh, credit card. The only reason they let me do things is because my name's on the credit card. Okay? When your name's on the credit card, you become a real important person. And so I was there and uh, was paying for that. And the lady looked at us, looked at me, and looked at Diane. And uh, she said something like this. She said, I am really thankful for what y'all do at the dental clinic. And I said, I just said, oh, okay. She said, when I was going through a real difficult time in my life, I got into the dental clinic and they worked on my teeth when I couldn't afford uh, for somebody else to do that. And I can't tell you how much uh, you have helped me. And uh, uh, just seeing with any type of ministry, seeing lives that are impacted by the things that you do is a reward. That folks, we're not just doing these things to do, th do things. We're doing this in the name of Christ and so that we can be a witness for Christ. Uh, and currently, uh, they're in the, down, at the ba uh, down at the dental clinic. They can always use extra hands of volunteers. You don't have to be uh, orientated toward dentistry uh, and a hygienist uh, to, to be able to help. Uh, we have need for chaplaincy there of being able to sit down and chat with people, talk with people while they're waiting. Uh, I will tell you an interesting story, though. Uh, uh, one of our dentists one time was working on this uh, patient and uh, decided they, the dentist decided he was going to witness to them. And the person really got <laughs> upset and scared when, he st when the dentist started talking to him about Jesus and are you ready? You know, if you were to leave here, where would you go? And the, the patient got <laughs> thought that they were dying, basically, and uh, 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 took a, after the doctor convinced them that they wasn't dying, uh, they were able to witness to them and share with them about Jesus Christ. And uh, 
how important it is that we do that in every venue and every avenue uh, that we have. And we're thankful for the dentist and the hygienist and the folks uh, who are faithfully committed to that. That ministry's been going on about 25 years now. And some of the uh, dentists that started with that originally are still a portion and still work in that ministry. Uh, Dr. Ralph Thacker and Diane Thacker uh, from down at Livermore are very involved. And if you would like to be involved in some kind of way, uh, they would love to talk to you about that. They are always in need of folks to help uh, in that work and in that ministry. And we're thankful. Uh, the last, last year, uh, the estimate on the amount of work that they did uh, dentally for pa uh, patients was somewhere between thirty and $50,000 worth of dentistry work that was done uh, by the folks at the dental clinic. And so we're thankful for those, and we're thankful for the opportunity to be able to do that and realizing that you are a part of that as well. Uh, other areas on the back of your sheet, if you want to look there, uh, there's, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up instead of starting at the top. There's all kinds of training opportunities that we have periodically. In September, we'll have a training uh, concerning evangelism. And in the coming year, we will have at least three or four different trainings uh, concerning evangelism. And the reason for that is not everyone fits and everyone can't fit it into their schedule at the right time. So that would be a... Uh, we're trying to cast a broader net just so that people would be aware of their need to share their faith personally, that it's the most important thing that you can do and your impact in this world will have much greater impact. Ministers can only do so much, and when you think about multiplying that by each one of us, how big you make things when each of us are willing to share and to tell the story. We have a Bible study library where the church can use materials that we have and you don't have to pay anything. You just use the material. When you get finished with it, you bring it back. We have all kinds of studies, uh, Beth Moore studies, uh, men's studies, all kinds of different things that's available for you to uh, uh, borrow from us. And we love to lend those out and pray that God would use them. One of the ones is uh, sharing Jesus without fear. It's an excellent uh, study. Uh, those kinds of things and how that God can use those. The Wilson Trust Scholarship. Uh, Brother Wilson and his wife uh, Hattie uh, lived up in uh, Ohio. They moved back to Kentucky, moved back to Owensboro, Kentucky. And they decided to set up a scholarship fund. They had been married for years and never been able to have children, and they gave $100,000 to the davis McLean Baptist Association to help students go to college. Currently, we are uh, helping uh, freshmen and sophomore students uh, go to college and trade school or other types of schooling. Currently, we help them buy books, and uh, according to the earnings of the money is the amount that we can help uh, during a particular semester or year through the great uh, uh, handling of that money. College students have been helped for about the last uh, 25 years and that $100,000 has grown to $360,000 plus all of the students that's been helped uh, semester by semester uh, through those years. Uh, what a ministry and what a glorious thing. Uh, when my daughter was in college, she was able to do that. And you're welcome to apply to that. Uh, let's see, I believe it's on there. Uh, June and November are the application dates. You can pick those. You can pick up an application there at the office at our building. And uh, it's a great, a great, great thing. You know, that's one committee that's really fun to serve on when you're doling out and handing out money to people. It's just amazing how nice they can be to you. That's funny right there. Uh, uh, you know, when you're taking money away from people, it ain't funny. But when you're able to give people money uh, and help people uh, that particular kind of way, it's, it's truly a blessing. And we have helped a multitude of college students. And if a, if a child wanted to go to... Uh, 
trade school or something like that. Uh, that committee is always pretty flexible uh, in dealing with that. Uh, recently, we just uh, bought uh, a block party trailer that will be used in evangelism. A training event is set up for May the 20th. I believe it's from about 9 to 1130 at the Cross Point Baptist Church about a, a block party trailer that's used uh, in evangelism. Uh, it'll have blow up uh, uh, things for the children, various games, all those kinds of things. Uh, we are in process of getting that established with the state so that we will be in compliance with the state. And as soon as those, all the prerequisites for that, uh, we will be lending that and allowing churches to use that. Another area uh, of great significance and importance, one of the big things that we do every year is world changers. Uh, currently, we have a, a little over 200 students and their leaders that will be coming from across the uh, uh, United States to come and be with us. I think one group is coming from Texas this year that will be arriving here on June the 19th. And they will be working on homes in uh, Owensboro, Davis County, and McLean County. Uh, I think there'll be a, close to about 20 projects this year. Uh, this is our 10th year to do World Changers. And during that time, uh, according to the city of Owensboro, uh, basically, World Changers has donated somewhere close to $700,000 worth of man hours in helping people with their homes. Uh, they build ramps, they paint houses, uh, they, they do yard work, they do a lot of different things in ministering. They go out into the community and witness for Christ. They share the gospel while they're here. Uh, a number of the students that have actually come have been saved while they were with us during that week. Uh, they go out in the day, they work. Uh, uh, we have host churches that uh, will take the meal to them uh, at their site, and the, they will feed that group. And then that group will go back that night back to the school. They will be at Davis County High School this coming year, and... Uh, uh, they'll get cleaned up, they'll have supper, then they'll have their worship services and things like that. Then they go to, then they go to bed and then they get up and they leave about 7.30 the next morning for another day of work. And that's a tremendous uh, ministry and we're always thankful for the work that's done with that. And it's not about just the physical work that's done, but the spiritual work that's done in sowing seeds and sharing the message about Jesus Christ and who he is. And folks, we're convinced that people need to know Jesus Christ, aren't we? Amen. That we believe people need to know Jesus. And the most important relationship that you will ever have in this world is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And that we need to, we need to exalt him. We need to lift him up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And part of the work of the church, your church, every church, is to lift up the Lord Jesus. And the drawing power of the church is not just simply, shouldn't be the music, Brother Steve, although the music is important. Shouldn't just be the preacher and the preaching, Brother Greg. It shouldn't be just the things that we do, but the real drawing power, the really thing that the person that makes it happen is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who, who does it. He's the one. And the reason he does it is because the church belongs to Jesus. I want to make it real clear. This church isn't your church. You may be a member here. You may be a part of it. But the church belongs to Jesus Christ. And the church is his uh, in two ways. First of all, he created her. And second of all, he redeemed her. He paid the price for the existence of the church. Uh, would you all stand for just a minute? You're almost asleep. Okay, you can sit back down now. Y'all are really a compliant group. I really appreciate that. Uh, Usually you always have one person, I ain't getting up. That's when you know you're really in a Baptist church, uh, is when that happens. Uh, 
But with world changers and the things that we do with that, you're a part of that because your church gives to, to the association, the evangelism trailer, and, and uh, our jail ministry project uh, is something that we do every year right before Christmas where we give a $10 gift to uh, uh, the children of inmates in the Davis County Jail, uh, children from 0 to 12 uh, they are given a Bible. The family is given a Bible typically as well. And uh, uh, those the local folks uh, that have children uh, in our area, there's people that come by our building and pick up routes and deliver those. We'd love for you to be a part of that. That's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. I love the story about a young lady. She was in college. She'd come home. She and her mom got a route. They were out uh, delivering. And on that, on that day, they were doing it like this. One, one house they would go to, the mom would take the gift up and give, give it to the children that was at that house. The next stop, they would make the young lady that was a college student would uh, go up. And uh, it was the college student's uh, turn. She went to the door and knocked on the door. And there was a little boy came to the door. And his name was Johnny. And Johnny came to the door and... And uh, the, young, the young lady turned to him and said, Are you Johnny? And he said, I am. And she handed him the gift and said, This gift is from your dad. And he wanted to make sure that you uh, had a Christmas. And here's a Bible to go with your gift. And the little boy looked up at the young lady and began to cry. And said, I thought that he had forgotten me. The young lady that had de delivered the present, of course, went back to the car crying as well. And her mom said, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And she said, told the story about Johnny. And she said, Mom, I believe this is one of the best Christmas we've ever had and the sad thing to say folks is there's a whole bunch of little Johnnies out there in this world right here around us and the sad part in today's world is not only is daddy in jail mama's in jail too we had a number of, of uh, children this year that both mom and dad were in jail and when you minister to those folks and you give them a Bible, you give them something that's of eternal value. It's not a $10 gift. When you hand them the Word of God, you're handing them something that's of far more greater significance than a, a toy or a stuffed animal or something like that. You're giving them an opportunity to hear about Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes we get to say more. Sometimes we don't get to say very much. But we take that opportunity to use that so that people can hear about Jesus. And you see, it's all about knowing Christ. I'm thankful for the people that was in my life that were willing to tell me something about who Jesus Christ was. And while we look at things and we look at what we're doing, folks, I'm, I'm talking to you about serving and the willingness to jump in and do something with us. And, and we need that. We're, we pray that you would. And we're encouraged when you do. And we pray that your tribe would increase. But folks, when you really get down to it, the most important thing that we can talk about, the most important thing that we can share, is that there's a God in heaven who loves people like you and me. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. That that God who is in heaven loves people and he loves the world that he created. But you know, it's not just enough for me to say that God loved the world. And he does. It's not just enough to say that God loves everybody. And I believe that he does. Don't you? I believe God loves everybody. And then last of all, it comes down to the fact that we need to understand that God loves you. 
that God loves me. It's one thing to say, God loves everybody. But when it gets down personal to the place where I see and understand that God loves me and that I have to do something with that love. Either I accept that love and receive Jesus or I reject his love. But he's reaching out to me. He's reaching out to love me. He's reaching out from a cross saying, I love you enough that this is what I'm willing to do for you. But you know something? That's not the end of the story. Because when he died, they took him off that cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And on Sunday morning, they looked inside that tomb because the stone had been rolled away. And miraculously and gloriously, he was risen and he had disappeared from them in those moments. And the ladies saw him. Some of them spoke to him. Uh, 500 witnessed him later and that he was alive forevermore. And that God who created the universe set the stars in the sky is the God that reached out in love and was willing to send his son Jesus to die on a cross to tell you that he loved you and that he longs to have a relationship with you and that he's reaching out to you even now. And it's not just enough. You may sit here and say, yeah, he loves the world. Yeah, he loves people. But you need to get to the place to say, I know that God loves me. You know something? For me, I know a lot about me. I don't know a lot about everybody else. But to think that with warts and problems and all the things that we all have, he knows every one of those. And he still loves me. And he reaches out to me. And he reaches out in love. And that's what this church does. It reaches out in love into this community. And you may be here and God's reaching out to you in love. And he's calling you, speaking to you about coming to Christ. Some of you have already experienced that. The second part of that is this. Once I have a, once I've met Christ and I know that he loves me, I need to reciprocate that love back to him. I need to show him that I love him. Now, we're not saved by our works. Uh, but once we are saved, there are some things in our life that would be evidence of who Jesus is. You see, there's a lot of people go around, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Okay? As a matter of fact, I believe the Bible says that the demons believe and tremble. It's more than just saying, I believe that he's there. I believe what they say about him is true. It's that I give him my life and that I fall in love with him, that I, I reciprocate the love that he's demonstrated. Not that I love God, but that he first loved us. Not that we love God, but that he first loved us. You see, he took the initiative. He reached out in love so that I can love him. In return, just a couple of weeks ago, I got to go and hear a fellow named Claude King. Claude wrote a book with uh, Henry Blackaby called Experiencing God. And uh, to a, a group of directors of missions, he, he made this comment. He said, do you guys want to look at the symptoms that people have or do you want to deal with the real problem? And he said, you know, you can talk, you can talk to them about uh, reading their Bible about having a consistent prayer life, about giving, about fellowship, about worship, about discipleship. And he said, those are all good things. But he said, those are symptoms. You see, the real issue is how much I'm in love with Jesus Christ. And that maybe there's times in my life that I don't love him the way that I should. And that there's a danger that we can fall out of love with the one who redeemed us and that we don't love him the way that we should and that we need to respond to that. Uh, we need to respond back to his love and that he's reaching out and calling to us just like he's reaching out to the lost to be saved in his love through redemption. He reaches out to us as believers for us to strengthen our relationship, to walk in love in relationship to who he is. And the way that we do that 
is through obedience of spending time with him, of fellowshipping with him. Fellas, men, I'm talking to y'all. With your significant other wife, nod your head. I can guarantee you uh, that one of the things that they want is just simply you doing something with them that they enjoy. Okay? I'm telling you something important. You, you need to catch on, fellas. Okay? Uh, I'd like to say I'm a great example of that. I'm not... I've got room for vast improvement, okay? Uh, my wife is a movie buff. She'd go to the movies three or four times a week. So a couple of weeks ago, she said, I want to go see The Case for Christ. Oh, by the way, if you haven't gone to see that, you ought to go see it. It's well worth seeing, okay? And then the other afternoon, uh, I felt I needed a few grounding points. <coughs> I won't say why, uh, but I said, you want to go You want to go to the movies this afternoon after I get off work? And uh, we went and watched a movie together. And you know, uh, that's a small price to pay for me to demonstrate my love for her. Right? Spend some time with her. Do something with her that she enjoys doing. Now, I want to tell you something. There's a whole lot of relationship in that kind of stuff, even with you and God, of you spending time with him, doing the things that he's all about. And that's how you show him you love him. And that's how God does what he does with you and me. And God wants that from us. And if that area of your life might need a little, today would be a good day to get that taken care of because he's reaching out to you and he loves you. For those of you that don't know Christ, there's a God in heaven who loves you and he's reaching out to you. And he's doing that through his glorious son. Jesus. And the most wonderful thing is having a relationship with Him. And in those dark, lonely hours when there's nobody but you and He that you know that He's there with you. And you can't have that. Unless you have Jesus. I pray. That this would be the day. That that would start. And you'd know. That he's with you. Let's pray. Gracious God. Lord. I pray today. That you would help us. To love you more. Lord I pray. That you would just. Pull on the heartstrings of folks about their love relationship with you. Lord, for that soul that's struggling like Lee Strobel was in the movie The Case for Christ, that Lord, when you look at the evidence, you can't come out to any other conclusion but this Jesus is who he said he was. What the Bible says about him is true and that he reaches out in love to people. Oh God, I pray that you'd reach out to somebody today that they'd take your hand and they had experienced the joy that comes in knowing Jesus. Lord, we give you this invitation, these moments in time. Use them. I pray that you would help people to come and renew their commitment and their joy in loving Jesus today. In his name we pray.